Yo, I'm back with the Michael Jackson content. Today I'm reacting to why the music industry felt threatened by Michael Jackson himself, the GOAT. Now before we get to the video, make sure y'all subscribe, join the guys, squad, turn on post notifications. Michael Jackson videos, just for y'all. Subscribe, please, please y'all. Subscribe if you're a real Michael Jackson fan. Michael Jackson, the most hey, popular artist of all time, all possibly one me. of the most Copy popular rated. human beings <laughs> yeah, of all time. Scott, we all know the story, best-selling album, mm -hmm. an unsurmountable amount of Grammys, setting a new standard in music video making, immensely wealthy, mm. and definitely one of the most important characters in music history. Oh. I don't think I know anybody who doesn't know about Jackson. There is one aspect of Michael Jackson that doesn't get talked about that the often though. Something, something that most likely out. was an important factor to him reaching his prime and quite possibly his decline as well. It mm. was something that I got interested in after comedian Eddie Griffin talked about him on Vlad TV mm. in 2016. I, I heard Check Mike was kind of gangster. Like I heard Mike would like beat up his monkey every so often. What? Let me put it like this. <laughs> you know what's gangster? I own Sony's publisher. Every time Beyonce and Jay-Z make a song, Michael was getting a check. <laughs> I bought the Beatles. Yeah. While I'm doing the video with the Beatles. That's gangster. In this Beatles. interview, oh Griffin God. talks Go about bro. Jackson as a powerful businessman, owning a good portion of the <laughs> Beatles catalog that? and 50% of Sony ATV and how he got paid every time several artists sold records. The interview made me Smart curious man, about Jackson's bro. power in the industry, both Smart in terms man. of ownership and stakes, but also in terms of the artistic influence and power man, yeah. Michael Jackson had on American pop culture as a whole. And obviously, sales and numbers plays into this. Was he possibly yeah, the most powerful well. artist in the music history at one point? I mean, especially in terms of the business part of his music, mm -hmm. I think he Make often sure portrayed himself anyways. as a bit naive and oblivious, as he quite frankly never talked about it in the media, like people might do nowadays. There are stories about Jay-Z, Dr. Dre, PDD, at least in hip-hop culture where, you know, business go, and music go hand in hand, much more than it did uh, in the time when Mike was alive. Okay. Before I get deeper into it and hopefully answer the question, I want to define what I mean when I talk about power in the context of the music industry. When I talk about power, and power in this video, in this context, has to be in the context of music. I don't count oh. artists who own other assets that have nothing to do with music. For instance, Jay-Z owns Tidal. He's more powerful in the music than if he only was an artist. Owning a part of the streaming industry gives him a substantial position against other players in the game, such as Spotify and Apple Music. Nas owns stakes in emerging tech companies that have nothing to do with music. It makes him powerful, but not in the context of music. With that said, let's first look at what Michael Jackson owned in the music industry. A lot. Even though most people were less aware of it at his prime, Eddie Griffin was actually right. Michael did own a substantial amount of Sony ATV music, more precisely 50%, the mm. ATV part. Michael bought ATV Music Publishing in 1985 after learning about how lucrative publishing can be. The bid was of a price of 46 million US dollars and his competitors mm. bid with prices that were close to his own bid. One of them was real estate tycoon Samuel Lefranc, another was a financier Charles Knapp and another one again was a record company Virgin Records. Mm. Michael Jackson wasn't competing against any artist over this catalog, but big okay. companies and financiers, entities who operated outside the music territory. Then there was a chance where I could have bought it. I felt very embarrassed buying them myself because they're Lennon McCartney's. I wouldn't have liked to just own them myself. I felt bad about that. So I rang Yoko <laughs> and I said, look, we've got a chance to buy these songs. The man's asking 20 million, 10 to you, 10 to me. Should we do it? You know, it looks like maybe we should do this. In fact, uh, they didn't go for 20, they went for 50 mm. in the end. The high bidder for the music was Michael Jackson. The, the decision to get his hands Ooh. on the Beatles catalog. Ooh. Tell me about that process. Like, give me, give me, give me. Well, Michael was good friends with Paul McCartney. And after Thriller, so just uh, gave it to Michael me. had a lot of money, a lot of cash. So Michael asked me to call Paul McCartney and Yoko Ono, his good friends. He did not want to bid <laughs> against you. them. Multiply that by And I spoke with Yoko, and I said, Yoko, are you bidding on this catalog? Smart and she said, no, we'd be thrilled if Michael subscribe. could get it, rather Please than some big corporation. I spoke like to uh, Paul McCartney's lawyer, who said they were not bidding. Uh, so we went out. It took us a year to close that deal. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of mm. competition. 
But Michael was passionate. He wanted to invest in things that he was passionate about. So we did buy the Beatles catalog. We later bought some Elvis Presley copyrights. And that publishing company now forms the cornerstone for his uh, network. Paul hmm. McCartney, powerful and wealthy in his own right, after asked whether or not to bid, claimed that their own catalog was too pricey, which says something about how much hmm. money is required to participate in bids like this. The purchase of this catalog, though, meant that Michael Jackson not only owned the Beatles catalog, but also owned important songs from other artists such as Bruce Springsteen, Elvis, Cher, and Rolling Stones. I mean, you have to understand the scope of this move. Just to give an example, mm. Jackson saw and understood the power of this move when he got, quite correctly, as Eddie Griffin said, a check every time commercials played songs by the Beatles. And this actually happened. Michael Jackson licensed the Beatles song Revolution to Nike for use in their commercial. Do something. Anything. <laughs> what? <laughs> Michael Jackson cut the oh my god. Mike got paid $500,000 to license that song. Not only did he have the rights to then 4,000 songs in the ATV publishing catalog, which he could license freely as I just said, Jackson got checks every time someone played songs from these artists on the radio or live or used in sample. That says a lot. So just to clarify, ATV Music was initially a separate company that Michael Jackson acquired. Sony eventually, after Michael Jackson bought the rights to ATV Publishing, mm. decided to give Michael Jackson an offer he couldn't refuse, which was to merge ATV with Sony, which is how we now retrospectively see Michael Jackson as a 50% owner of Sony slash ATV. The crazy mm. part is, Sony ATV would, after the merge, grow to become much, much bigger, with mm. over 2 million songs in ownership in the oh. amount of songs in the company's publishing, with entire Wait, 2 million say? songs in ownership, in the amount of songs in the company's stuff. publishing, with entire catalogs of no, individual today's. songs from artists such as Eminem, Akon, Shakira, Neil Diamond, mm. Bob Dylan, and Beck. So 50% ownership in the biggest music publishing company in the world, I mean, you gotta be powerful if you own 50% of the mm -hmm. biggest music publishing company in the world. That's not bad at all. Mm. In addition to this though, Michael owned 100% of his own songs through his separate company, MyJack Music. If you think about it, publishing is probably the most sought after ownership in the music business today. If you own the masters of your song, you get 100% of the money coming from the song or album sold. Ownership of one's own music is not common, even today. Artists that have signed away the rights to their songs to bigger mm -hmm. labels for an advance check means that artists don't own their own music yeah. fully. My Jack Music it, wasn't just Mike owning his own catalog, a catalog that is played constantly around the world because of Michael Jackson's music. It also meant that he owned yeah, individual hits. songs by Elvis Presley, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Tupac, Rihanna, Kanye West, De La Soul, Black Eyed Peas, and today Kendrick Lamar. I mean, if you look at this list, you see all the artists that I just mentioned, and mm. many more. You can imagine the royalty checks for that catalog alone. Mm. Crazy. Oh no, he playing that song. Is that the end of the video? But no, is it still going? Oh, it's still. Mm. What song is this? Comment what song is it? Just like Michael Jackson got a dog skin friend. Then it's gonna get copyrighted, bro. I mean, this one is a given. Cultural impact, the way you have the ability to move and sway the culture in a certain direction, Did plays we, uh, a big role um, in what might be perceived as power. Celebrity and American culture go hand in hand. In fact, celebrity and pop music are American culture in many ways, especially mm. since pop music has been dominated by America in modern times. 
Michael Jackson was and still is a powerful influence over what we perceive as mm. American pop culture. Every move he made had an impact. He became the first black artist to be hosted on MTV, and since Mark Anthony Neal, a professor of black popular culture at Duke University, argues that MTV, quote, was the best example of mm. cultural apartheid in America, I think it strengthens the fact that oh. Mike indeed was powerful. Former president of CBS Records, Walter Yetnikoff, said, in a 2009 interview with CNN that he remembers MTV wouldn't play Mike's videos because MTV had formatted itself as a rock station. This in turn made Yetnikov threaten MTV to pull off videos of his other artists from the channel. Mm. You know, if Michael Jackson's videos, Billy Jean, Thriller, and Beat It didn't get played, all the other artists' videos would get pulled off it as well so as you can see mtv became bigger because of michael's sheer talent and artistry and michael actually forced big people like yetnikov to do moves like this that's how much power he had just because of his sheer talent and artistry i mean you know how to mark i don't think sound. i know about any other artist today who has that kind of power on part two of this i'm gonna compare michael jackson with other artists, both contemporary and, you know, peak artists such as Paul McCartney, John Lennon, Jimi Hendrix, Elvis Drake. Presley, of course, Jay-Z, who have been perceived as really powerful artists. Subscribe, like, all that stuff. Check me out on Twitter, links in the description. Also check me out on Instagram. Peace. You know, that was one of the most educational videos I ever seen about Michael Jackson and just stuff he did and about the music industry that was so dope if y'all enjoyed this video make sure y'all like comment subscribe give me more video suggestions this was dope I can't wait to see part two make sure y'all subscribe please turn on post notifications do it with me peace